The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate the growl and a problem with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 105, NASDAQ up 45, S&P's up 6.5. Gold contract down seven dollars and sixty cents, trading at twelve seventy-five an ounce. We have silver down twenty-seven cents, fourteen dollars twenty-eight cents an ounce. Light sweet crude up thirty cents, fifty-eight dollars ninety-three cents a barrel. Notes and bonds—they just continue higher, folks. They get the volume behind the move. They get the price behind the move. We get the ten-year right now up nine ticks, one twenty-five oh five. That's uh, yielding a two point. Uh, I think it's. Uh, I think we got under two point three. 2.29. That's where we're on the 10 year right now. That looks like it wants to get into this 2% uh, area, which is uh, pretty amazing. Uh, 30 year. 30 year is up 19 ticks, 151.18. And King Dollar. King Dollar is up 203 ticks, trading 97.680. That failed on price last week. It's going up on light volume today. The Euro is at 111 to 1 US dollar. The Yen is at 109.56. The Pound is at 120.71. If we get over, we take a look at this uh, 10 year. yield this is pretty amazing and i suspect what we're going to have here folks is this is going to be a pretty fast move the you know if we go back five days ago we were at 2.43 you're at 2.29 your next swing point uh down here is just laying out at 2.01 um bottom line is that uh we got memorial day you got the end of the Month, you know, we'll see whether we get any window dressing. If we go over and take a look at these uh, S and Ps, uh, what we did on Friday is that you you had a small bounce. You get up there, light volume, 52 million shares on the way up. We go down on 98 million, and bottom line is that you know we'll see whether we can get into this uh, 285 area. Right now, you're at uh, 283. Oil bonds, oil's flat. The interest rate market's pretty wild. Yeah, cheap money, right? Coming at us. It's, it's you know, the 30-year. So picture at, at 2.3, folks, that is saying that mortgages can actually get down to 4.4, 4.5, which is pretty amazing. Uh, once again, if we go take a look at some of the... Uh, so let's see, home prices in U.S. cities... Uh, decelerated in March for the 12th straight months, suggesting sellers may not have yet fully adjusted to buyer's demand for affordable properties. The S&P CoreLogic uh, Price-Case-Shiller Index of Property Values increased 2.7% from a year earlier, the slowest since August 2012. The data shows that was still slightly above estimates from the monthly gain. That's interesting how they put the beginning of it decelerated, but yes, they went up, but not as much as they've been going up. Right? Yes. It's been, it's been growing a lot faster. That's it. Then it's, it's growing at a slowing rate. Yes. Right. Right. Uh, sellers are still struggling to attract buyers. What, what you're going to have here, folks, is that, uh, the way these, this interest rate structure has come down so dramatically, um, you'll, you'll get some action in that market. Some of the higher volume equities out here, we get uh, Advanced Micro up $1.73, trading 2818 Intel's down a buck. You have, um, look at that. I don't know what this stock is. Let's see what this is. So this is Anaplan. That is up. So they develop a published cloud platform business applications up $7 right now. They have their earnings this morning, I believe. All-time high. Yeah, so their, their numbers... They expected a, a loss of 20 cents, and they had a loss of 16. Revenue, 75 million. I get some action, man. That's some big action. 
And if we go over to the pound, <laughs> this is going to be interesting to see what happens in the UK. So they had the European elections. Pounds right now trading at 126, and it looks like the the, the two major parties with this saying took a beating. And what did happen is that the two far ends, right and left, are the ones that did good. So this Brexit deal, folks, is going to get really interesting watching, you know, is this going to be a hard Brexit? What, what is it going to actually come down here? Because that's the guy, Neil Farage. Nigel Farage. Nigel Farage. He's the one that uh, basically came out with the most amount of votes, uh, percentage-wise. The biggest night's winner was Nigel Farage, whose Brexit party aims to take the UK out of the UK without waiting to negotiate a deal on the other side the divide. The pro-European uh, Union Liberal Democrats were second on the national vote. The implications for the future of British politics uh, alarm both parties. Well, I guess it would. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. We have the Dow Industrials up 79, NASDAQ up 29, S&P's up 2.5. Come right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618.
Welcome back, folks. We have the uh, Dow Industrials uh, up 52, NASDAQ up 18, S&P's a flat out here. And first, let's go take a look at the gold contract. I want to get over and take a look at David Tepper for a second. So gold contract out here this morning. We got some volume on the way down. You're going against strength from last Thursday, but there's big volume in this thing. Um, so we go up last Thursday with 330,000, which is really big volume. We're down with 242, and at 830, that was at 136. So that volume is still continuing. Now, it hasn't got against its lowest swing yet, but I suspect it is going to try. And that lowest swing point out here uh, is the, uh, well, the, the day of the strength is 1272. We hit 1275. If we go into the silver market, uh, this thing has been dragging all the metals down. That's that's a decisive break on the silver market. Yeah, quite a move. Yeah, so this... Yeah, you're breaking a swing. You have volume on the break. Real question is, let me just see, put this up. Side one. So if we put this on a continuous contract, yeah, it's harder to see, actually. Yeah, this is going after its uh, swing lows from um, 2018. 1386, the high of that is 1440. 1425, where we're at. So that's a little problem child out here. The, um, and what's intriguing, of course, is that interest rates are coming down. We have divergence in, in a big way because what you do have is that the, the rates are coming down. The dollar did fail. You know, we're going higher this morning on the dollar, but that's 4,900 contracts. 98,085 is the number. Right now, you're at 97,695. Um, we'll see where this shakes out. You know, some of the, we were talking about uh, David Tepper. Here it is. We were talking about Tepper last week. So, what this is about is that uh, this just a little article about shoes that are hard to fill. Um, and it's intriguing here, which, which I didn't know. So look at this. Invest, so the hedge fund industry boasts some of the best money managers on the planet, but good luck investing with them. They're uh, precious few, and it's never clear who they are at the beginning. Um, by the time their skills become apparent, they've already amassed a fortune and no, no longer need investors' money. So look at this. Tepper started in 1993, and he started with $57 million. But he closed right after that, soon after that. It doesn't say when, when yeah. fame and money poured in. Those who were invested with Tepper from the start or close to it never had the opportunity. So where do you see his record? This is pretty amazing. The track record tre Tepper leaves behind is... Um, otherworldly. 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 It must mean, mean good, right? From out of this planet. Out know? of this planet, okay. Yeah, different world. Okay. Uh, Appaloosa has returned 25% a year since its inception since 1993. That's, that's amazing. As in nobody on this planet puts up those kind of numbers. You know? Seriously. Exactly. Yeah. To put that in perspective, a $10,000 investment in 1993 would be worth $3.6 million. Compounded 25%, you're going to have a lot of money over 20, 25 years. <laughs> Isn't that amazing, man? Yeah. I mean, it really is. It's yeah. like, and you're, you're talking about, you know, just... If you we're all in the market, try to make that kind of money consistently, folks. It's like so. Well, just finish where the comparison. Comparison, yeah. the same hypothetical investment in some fund weighted a broad collection of hedge funds worth just eighty-five thousand. So Look at that, yeah, huh? yeah. Um, and the S and P Berkshire Hathaway would have been yielded um, one fourteen and two seventy-seven. So S and P would have been one fourteen. Berkshire would have been two seventy-seven. David Tepper, three point six million. Yeah. Um, best performing mutual fund since ninety-three. Fidelity Select Software and IT Service Portfolio worth 476, and that's cherry picking the best mutual fund in like you know any of all industries. Still only that, under absolutely amazing. 25 percent over that time is just staggering. Man. It is because you have you have big ups and downs, right? I mean, where are the losses to average that number? Is just staggering. Yeah. So let's see. Like many lead uh, managers, Tepa showed some unusual traits. One is the foresight to put performance ahead of fees. Appaloosa has returned money to investors in eight of the last nine years, according to institutional investor, continuing the longstanding policy to return capital to its investors in order to maintain a size that he could maximize his returns. Yeah, yeah, that's a big one. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, he ranks 120 on the Bloomberg in Milli Billions Index with an estimated net worth of 11.2. Uh, Tepper also has a knack for knowing when to take big risks. Appaloosa was seven times more volatile than the I H. Think, I think that's the um, hedge fund index they were referencing oh, okay. up, up top. Yeah. From 1993 to 2014, as measured by annualized standard deviation, three times more volatile than the S&P 500 and twice as volatile as Berkshire Hathaway stock. But the more of that volatility can be attributed to Appaloosa's ups and downs than no. only to, to its ahead. ups, then its downs. Oh. Yeah. Owing to Tepper's penchant. Penchant for making deeply contrarian bets. Look at that. Yeah. In the aftermath of the dot-com bust, Guru Focus estimates that Tepper was down 25% in 22, roughly in line with the S&P. But when the recovery took hold the following year, Tep was up 149%, or 120 percentage points more than the market. Yeah, so market must have been up 29%, staggering in its own right, but... He, he picked the, the guys that were going to rebound pretty yeah. substantially. And so look at this next one, too. In 2008, he was down 28.7% in 2008, or 10 percentage points more than the S&P. Better, uh, no, better than... Not more, because the S&P uh, would have been down 37 then, okay. so better. Better than the S&P. When the market recovered, he was up 133%, or 106 per percentage points. This is just amazing. More man. than the market. Yeah. Gotta well, love it, man. The numbers are staggering, man. They, they, they are. are. That's, that's over the length of time. Yeah. I mean. And the number of uh, boom and busts you've had in there. Yes. Yeah. And, For and, a variety of reasons, too. You had the tech bubble, you had the real estate collapse, right. you know, mortgage crisis, um, bank crisis, whatever you want to call it. Right. Um, yeah, and he nailed them all almost. <laughs> he, yeah. exactly. You gotta love it, man. Yeah. 877-927-6648. Let's go take a look at this S&P. So what I expect we're going to see here, folks, this S&P is building cause for the next leg down. I don't expect this to actually come about, though, until the beginning of June because this is a short week. You got window dressing coming at the end of this week. So it looks to me like we're going to get more sideways movement. You know, what we definitely have is that we still have folks – and traders on vacation for the long weekend. You can see we didn't kick off with Kevin Hinks this morning because guess what? It's, the people are still getting back from vacation, you know, over this long weekend. Good for him. Hopefully he's enjoying some no. Florida sunshine no, totally. today before totally. heading back to Chicago. Yeah. And if we take a look at this S&P, you know, bottom line, this looks to me like you're building cars to get into this uh, right, right now at 28.33, but this 27.13 is game. That'll be the next leg down. If we go into the NDX 100, setting up basically the same way, you know, what we had done last Thursday, you go lower with 43 million shares. You were going into that 67 million. Friday, you go up on 25 million. Today, we're at 5.5. So we'll get a little bit more than that. But I don't think it's going to be that much more. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks!
The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. We have the Dow up 68, NASDAQ up 23, S&Ps up one and a half. And let's go over to Amazon. So there's a question in the den about uh, small sellers versus large sellers in Amazon. And if you want to just really see how big Amazon is, it's pretty amazing. So what this story is about is that Amazon is poised to unleash long feared purge of its small suppliers. When we go through this, though, what you're going to see, which is pretty wild, folks. Is, so the next headline is the thousands of mom and pop who lose their bulk orders. What's pretty incredible. Do you know what they consider a small seller? I, I heard the story. Only cause, 10 million. Yes. 10 million in gross sales is a small seller. Probably so, annually, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, so what's, what's happening here, well, here, let's go through this. Two months ago, Amazon halted orders from thousands of suppliers with no explanation. Panic ensued until the orders quietly resumed weeks later with Amazon suggesting the pause was part of a campaign to weed out counterfeit products. Uh, suppliers breathed a sigh of relief. Uh, now a large and more permanent purge is coming that will upend the relationship between the world's largest online retailer and many of its longtime vendors. In the next few months, bulk orders will dry up for thousands of mostly small suppliers. According to three people familiar with the plan, Amazon's aim is to cut cost, focus Wholesale purchasing on major brands like Procter & Gamble, Sony, Lago. That will ensure that the company still has adequate supplies in order to merchandise and help it compete with Walmart, Target, and Best Buy. Um, now, the mom and pops have long relied on Amazon for a steady stream of orders that will, that will have to, they will have to learn a new way of doing business. So when you cut to the chase on this, folks, it's, you know, it's amazing. Look, look at how long they've been doing it. It's so we, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, it's one of the biggest shifts in Amazon's e-commerce strategy since it opened to independent sellers 20 years ago. So what it has to do with really is just the bulk ordering. We haven't really gotten into the that, so it's just that Amazon's not going to order bulk orders from these small suppliers anymore. You're still going to be able to sell your products on there, but they're going to get a very limited supply. Amazon's going to buy a very limited supply from you, and then they're going to buy a very limited supply again, as opposed to buying a bulk order from you, and they're just not going to be buying bulk from smaller suppliers anymore, right. which is how they do everything almost right now. Right. They're, they're going to have the supplier hold the product, basically, because this gets into it more the aspect of how they're switching out uh, their supply chain, basically. Um, you know, and, of course, this is just from three spokesmen, but 
um, it, it, I, I can see how that, that can fly. Like, okay, Amazon secures inventory two ways. The company buys product directly from wholesale vendors, reselling them like a traditional retail store, and lets independent merchants post their products on the site in the marketplace model familiar, similar to eBay. Or consignment shop. About half of the goods sold on Amazon come from independent merchants, and the change will push the marketplace share of revenue even higher. Yeah, so less independent. Yep. More the Amazon marketplace type. Um... There's another upside for Amazon by focusing, by forcing many existing wholesale vendors to sell their product directly to consumers. The company holds less inventory, reducing the risk that it gets stuck with unsold merchandise. Moreover, Amazon can collect a commission on each sale a vendor makes and charges them a fee to store, pack, and deliver their products, boosting profits. Generally speaking, vendors with selling less than 10 million products each year on the site will no longer get wholesale orders from Amazon, although that will vary by category, said the people who requested anonymity to speak about the internal matter. It's pretty wild, man. It's, yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty wild that 10 million is considered a small on Amazon. Yeah. That didn't hit me too hard as surprising, only because, I mean, they account for like half of every internet sale, you know, and if you're only doing... $5 million on a platform that's half of every internet sale in the country. You know, I mean, you're probably not hitting, you could sell almost anything, right? Yeah. And if you're delivering it to the mass markets. As in, we all know, you search for an item on Amazon, you're usually, there's 100 different kinds of that same item, but you just want that one item at the top. Right. So you're either at the top or you're not. You know, right. I've told you about, I'm friends with one um, guy who runs a business, does a similar deal. You're either at the top or you're not. You know, you better not be second or third, right? Because there's is that a lot. The air filters, you mean? There's a lot of. They sell right. a million different things. There's, oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, okay. but right. you, you better right. be at the top of because right. you're you're looking for a cheap item, and there's very very similar items, and oh, it's yeah. just like a Google search. Right. You know, there's a lot of things on Google that'll probably explain to you the same exact thing you're looking for. If you're past the first page, zero. You know? Yeah. Pretty intense. Yeah. No doubt, man. You know, if we go overseas, let's go take a look at overseas. So. Last night, you had Shanghai go sideways. And what's happening, of course, with the China trade deals is that the, let's just see first. So, so this went up 17 bucks last night. Well, that's pretty good. Okay, so we had some volume here. Um, that's a little pop, slight pop. So that means that Shanghai can actually you know, get up maybe even to 29.86 and right now you're 29.09. The uh, DAX in Germany, that's going sideways out here this morning. Merkel, I guess, uh, she's looking that her top protege, I guess, she's decided now that this is not going to be one of her successes. Okay. She put her in, in line for, for it, but... This, this story out here. So they had their vote over the weekend, the whole European Union. Yes. And uh, evidently, uh, a lot of the leading, well, they would be the leading parties, uh, didn't do as well as they thought. In this case, Merkel has given up hope on her heir apparent as, uh, and is hunkering down in office to face the growing turmoil in Germany's ruling party. The... Uh, yeah, so even to dig into it, because it started last week, so you have... Um... Since taking over as leader of the Christian Democratic Union in December, maybe we get this name, Annegret Kramp Karrenbauer, uh, slid in the opinion polls and then roiled the party with a failed effort to accelerate Merkel's exit. That was being reported last Ooh. week. Um, yeah. <laughs> and on Sunday oversaw their worst ever result in the national election. Um, so it's, it's, there's a couple things going in there. All that persuaded Merkel that uh, Kramp Karrenbauer may not be up to the job, according to two officials. As a result, the chancellor is more determined than ever to stay in power until her term ends in 2021. Yeah, you try to take out the boss and it doesn't work. Then that's right. right? That's, that's right. That's crazy. Man. Yeah. Especially because she put him in. But anyway. Yeah. Maybe she saw some, uh, some of that uh, turmoil coming down the line in the elections, and maybe she tried to head it off with putting that, some of that blame on Merkel. You know, I'm sure there's some politics at play there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We take a look at Apple. Apple uh, down 62 cents, 178.37. Um, and Nike. So there's a story out there today that, you know, bottom line is that retaliation, you know, 
two companies that could be on the hit list here in China, and both of them do an extensive amount of business in China, is Nike and uh, Apple. Uh, the CEO of Huawei um, came out and said that he would, uh, let's see if I can find this, because it was, he said, no, he wouldn't like that, because that's their major competitor. I'm sorry, what did he say, though? They were... the, he was saying they interviewed him on Bloomberg, right? Yes. This is Huawei, right? Yes. And uh, they asked him about, you know, the rumor is that Apple could be on the hit list. And he okay. Said, well, I'd be against that, even though they're my largest competitor in China. He doesn't think that that is the way to go in the trade. Did they say why? I'm just curious if they're the biggest competitor. Yeah, I, I know. Okay. Believe me. Yeah. 877 927 Dow up 33, NASDAQ up 14, SP down 2.5. Come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 33, Nasdaq's up 16, S&P's down two and a half. And uh, if we go take a look at uh, this story, so U.S. companies counting on China for a major part of their growth have targets on their backs as Beijing and Washington ratchet up trade tensions. Uh, so what it has in here, let's see. Every, I mean, the, the market itself is waiting, you know, what will China do, right? Yes. So, 
As companies await China's next move, there's uncertainty about what form of retaliation may take. Companies might just have to read the tea leaves on how their business operations are being treated. Uh, Aaron Ennis, Senior Vice President of U.S.-China Business Council, said in an interview with Bloomberg Television. That'd be pretty hard to read what a politician is going to do to you. Yeah, yeah. Um, China could use the template it honed in 2017 when relations with South Korea deteriorated over Seoul's decision to deploy a missile shield. The government curbed travel to South Korea, hurting cosmetics companies that rely on Chinese tourists, while local authorities shut most of the Lottie shopping companies, China stores, alleging fire safety violations. Consumers boycotted South Korean products, dealing a devastating blow to Hyundai Motors. There's a lot at stake as, chi as China's fastest growing consumer market is the top priority for U.S. giants looking for growth. The most obvious target is Huawei's smartphone rival, Apple, which gets about a fifth of its revenue from China. That's a big number. Oof. And manufactured iPhones there. The uh, California-based company has already begun suffering in the region, seeing sliding revenue as consumers buy more products from Huawei and other local brands. Yeah. Um, and so here's the... I think if you scroll down a little bit, it's yeah. below. So Huawei's finding Ren... Zengfei? Zengfei took the high ground in an interview with Bloomberg Television saying China shouldn't punch Apple. If that does happen, the billionaire added, I'd be the first to protest. He probably knows because I was trying to figure out why, right? So he took the high ground. He doesn't want to escalate things. I'm guessing it's because if China punches Apple, Trump and America is probably going to punch Huawei even harder. Totally. You know, so yeah, so it's in his personal right. interest. Uh, if there's one company out there that's probably been hurt the most, it's probably Huawei in the whole world by this trade war. So right. he doesn't want to see things escalate from no. a personal perspective. Um, yeah. There's no doubt. Yeah. You get Married International, uh, they're growing by leaps and bounds. They're going to open 30 hotels in China this year and have more than 300 hotels planned. Yeah, more than half the total in the Asia Pacific. Right. Now, the difference is, uh, and here you'll see it, is that Marriott, folks, is a management company. So it's a flag company. They plant the flag, do a great job managing it. And in this particular case here, you're going to see that most of those hotels are going to be owned by Chinese, though. Um, okay, so... Yeah, almost all the hotels are managed and owned by Chinese, making the case for that it's an American brand run as a Chinese company in that country. And then, of course, you get Nike, man. <laughs> yes. Um, now, they sponsor, I guess, let's see, Nike's... China is an increasingly important market for Nike. They're sponsoring the Shanghai Marathon and the two top soccer... Chinese... No, and the top Chinese soccer league. And the quarter that ended greater China revenue soared 24%. The 19th consecutive quarter of double-digit gains. Pretty intense, man. Yeah. And they all, let's see. And you get prescription down there as yeah, well. Yeah, prescription drugs, right? Chinese yeah. regulators ease restriction on drugs from overseas. A few companies have benefited. Few companies have benefited more than Merck. That's HPV vaccine. Yeah, cancer, Gardasol. Yeah, and the cancer drug, the first quarter, helped fuel. That's a big number. 58% leap. China sales, $725 million. That's, man, that, when you get $725 million sales in China, and the one is at, is it seven to one? That's pretty intense. <laughs> no, for sure. Yeah. And then so, they keep going down in terms of uh, Avengers and so oh, forth. Oh, that's I mean, right. This is The Hollywood industry, it's been talked about. I mean, if you want a mega film, you better be able to put up numbers in China these right. days. Um, right. Yeah. And they like the Avengers, evidently. Yeah. American, Indian, American, uh, Captain America and Iron Man have big fans in China. Yeah. Yeah. There you go, 600 million, the end game alone in China. Since April. Yeah. It's a big number, man. Definitely. It's going to be wild watching where this whole thing shakes out, folks. There's no doubt. Um, we'll see, because over the weekend... <laughs> This is, you know, you got the 25% tariffs on, but this, this quotes over the weekend uh, with Trump saying, hey, I can go up higher. Okay. It's like, which he can. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. That's about as intense as you get. Yeah. Let's go take a look at the uh, X. Uh, actually, let's go to the GDX first. So the silver market continues to get smoked. You know, they're not selling basically the GDX out here today. You got 15 cents lower. Um, 
This silver market, though, man. I mean, it, it looks like, you know, you got Pan American silver. At six months, it's down from 15 to 10, 10.44. This normally was always a nice, strong stock. And, you know, I understand, you know, it's, it's going against these 2016 levels with lighter volume, but none of them have held price. That's, that's kind of, that's been the problem, period. Hecla is like going after its 2000 and low level, which is just amazing. But it is what it is. It keeps going. It does. I mean, look at this. This, this broke that dollar forty-five. That was the low of 2016. And when you bring this back, it's like, you know, this is the first stock that I've seen that's game to that 2008 level of 98 cents, which is pretty intense. It's like, okay, so it, it, when, I, when I look at that, I'm trying to figure out, is that, is that going to be the industrial deal? Because silver really is a, is a base metal that's used in manufacturing a lot. So is this the China war that manufacturing is going to slow down that dramatically that they don't need any silver at all? Yeah. Uh, maybe that's the case. Um, you know, when we go take a look at the uh, GLD, if we stay, there's definitely a divergence between this, you know. You know, the, the GLD, there's no sellers there. Well, 68 cents. You get lower, lower price. But when you take a look at some of these gold equities, you know, we're certainly not at the 2008 levels. Yeah. In fact, you know, I had the gold report out today, and there were no buys in it, but if one buy would be there, it would be Barrick. And the reason that I basically was saying no buys is that we need some strength in this thing, man. Not just Barrick itself, just in general. But you can see what, what Barrick has done is that it's come back to Real strength in 2018. Last week it rejected lower price at the 22, uh, no, at the 1175. Today we did it at 1170, and the last swing point is 1152. Um, the positive inside that gold market is that Royal Gold, as well as Franco Nevada, those continue to be the strongest gold stocks, and they're both royalty stocks. You know, so it's like okay, most times what you have there, folks, if that's the case. That's saying physical gold has a probability of going higher. You know, you can see when you look at these, and then, I mean, there's, there's a total disconnect here between, look, look at this. I mean, if, is that 2008? Yes. That's, that's sick. So if you look at Franklin, Nevada, that was $9. You're at 73. You know, there's a yeah. big disconnect here. Yeah. And it's the silver disconnect, which is, a, I think, a problem for the metals. Dow, Dow Industrials up 25, Nasdaq up four, 14, S&P's down four, four and a half, come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last Last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, 
South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We had the uh, we have the Dow up 21, Nasdaq up 12, S and P's down four and a half. As you come over to our website, folks at TFNN, this is your last shot at getting a Tiger Dollar sale. Uh, bottom line, this is going to end this afternoon. Uh, we put it up for another day because uh, Friday. Uh, yeah, we, we were down for most of the morning our stream, unfortunately. Right. Um, so people might have been logging on. It was unfortunate. It was kind of the last day of business with the sale. So we'll extend it through today. I know some people are signing up over the weekend. So I encourage subscribers out there, whether it's Gold Report, Market Insights, Mastering Probability, Fibonacci, whatever you got, um, go get some Tiger Dollars. You can get up to a 40% bonus available in three options, whether it's 500, 1,000, or 1,500, and we've doubled the bonuses. So after today, it will be 10, 15, or 20%, and right now you can get 20, 30, or a 40% bonus. Apply them to your account. They're automatically deducted if you're a subscriber right now. No brainer if you're thinking about signing up anytime because this will probably be the last one we do through uh, maybe the end yeah. of this year. Right, yeah. Yeah. right. Every six months, it seems like it goes so fast. It does. It's pretty amazing. It folks. sure does, it's man. crazy. And market-wise out here, well, let's just go take a look at the oil market for a second. So oil, you know, that, that took a fast turn downtown last week, um, and it volume behind the move. It broke its uptrend that, you know, we've been in since December 24th, and I suspect, you know, we're going to build some cars here to try to get in this 55 level, your 5886, uh, you know. It'll take some sideways movement week, two weeks, uh, but that's how that seems to be setting up. And, of course, we just started... Memorial Day driving season, and uh, we had plenty of gasoline. You know, that gasoline number came in that build last week, and that's going to make a difference. If you take a look at uh, Exxon, Chevron, uh, they're both uh, heading to lower price. You know, Exxon's off this uh, $84 area to uh, $73. Okay. Stay right there, folks. We have uh, Fast Market coming up next. Then we got our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Ben. Wow! Look at him, folks.